Unreal Engine has been in the news a lot lately, but why should motion designers care about a video game engine? Hi, I'm Dan Maurer. And I'm Chris Bargan. We are 3D motion designers who use Unreal Engine every day. Today we're teaming up with School of Motion to give a high-level overview about how Unreal Engine is changing the motion design space. Over the last couple of years, I've picked up Unreal Engine in my workflow and have used it daily over the past year. One of the things that's been so valuable about it is that it allows me to make creative decisions and art direct whatever it is I'm doing in real time. So I get real-time feedback with things like motion blur, I can adjust my lighting, I can get a good feel for stuff without having to send renders, and it just gives me a new perspective on how I work, how I problem solve, and all the other good stuff that goes with it. Unreal Engine has gotten a lot of attention by how fast it can push out renders, but there's so much more than it can be than just an offline render. Before we move on, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that like button if this video is helpful. It really helps us out. In case you were wondering, Unreal Engine is a video game engine. And you're asking, what does this have to do with motion design? Being able to render high quality images at significantly faster speeds without the need for a render farm has opened up real-time engines to newer industries. That being said, one of the best ways for motion designers to use and transition into Unreal Engine is using it as an offline render. Now, when I talk about an offline render, I'm comparing this against programs like Cinema 4D and Redshift, Octane, Arnold, other renders that um, are out there to help you render image sequences. Now, as much as Unreal can do so much more beyond rendering image sequences, it can do that really fast. Unreal comes with several rendering methods, including raster, lumen, ray tracing, and path tracing. Using Lumen and Ray Tracing, we have already been seeing render speeds at 100 times faster than Redshift on a single GPU. As the Path Tracer continues to evolve in the near future, you can expect to get Octane-like render quality at insanely fast render times as well. The great thing about this is you don't need to have a full-on render farm or a massive stack of GPUs. Even one graphics card can give you real-time rendering and massively faster render speeds, which just opens up a lot of possibilities for the type of work that you can do and how fast you can turn work around. I'm a Cinema 4D user, and one issue with trying to work fast is the ability to see my finished product in the viewport. Well, say hello to real time in the viewport. In Unreal, you don't have to have a separate window updating to check your look development. What your viewport shows you is your render. Well, actually, I would say your render gets even better, but the viewport is pretty dang good. If you need to make adjustments to your animation with your lighting, I mean, there's really no hiccups. You can art direct your lighting, animation, and materials together in your viewport, along with post effects, motion blur, depth of field, and more. This is huge as a digital designer because the magic is in the details and being able to experiment and iterate on the fly really frees me up to make my best work. One of the most powerful and underrated aspects of Unreal Engine from the motion design community is that it is a game engine. 3D packages are great at what they do, however, they can be a bit limiting if you want to work with real-time inputs. So at its core, the ability to use live data inputs as well as the ability to use programming behavior in tandem with your motion design work opens up so many new possibilities for the industry. So one example of this that I can think of is, say you're used to animating and using a lot of keyframes throughout an entire composition. Well, with some of these things like blueprints and using live data, you could trigger a complex animation or a whole series of events off of one keyframe or pressing a button or say something else is going to trigger this whole animation for you because it's happening in real time. If you're wondering what a blueprint is, blueprint is a node-based visual programming language that's inside of Unreal Engine. Now this sounds complicated, but if you're used to using nodes for your materials or say Expresso and other software like Cinema 4D, you should feel right at home. Since Unreal Engine is a game engine, it's made to take inputs from a variety of devices, whether it be controllers, MIDI keyboards, game controllers, uh, and so much more. It takes all this information in and you can use this to drive your animations, drive your parameters for everything. So if you wanna actually work in real time or just automate your process or make it data driven, there's so many more possibilities you can do that go way beyond keyframing. In addition to live inputs, you also have the ability to use blueprints. Now, this is not required if you want to get in and animate and make great stuff in Unreal, but this is where the core of the engine really shines and there's so much power that goes into this. It opens up so many more possibilities to help you make work, great work, and do it quickly. 
Unreal has its many strengths, but it has had its issues with content creation, especially for the motion design community. Project Avalanche is bringing a dedicated set of tools for the motion design community into Unreal Engine. These tools bring the ability to work with 2D and 3D elements together in real time. It is also introducing a layer system to work with for all you After Effects people out there. Additionally, Unreal is adding other tools to its workflow, including cloners, effectors, booleans, improved text controls, and much more to help bridge the gap between Cinema 4D and Unreal. There are also much more advanced features to help automate the processes for broadcast workflows and much more, which will all help open up new opportunities for the motion design space. At this current moment, Avalanche is still in beta and has not yet been released. Piggybacking off of that, as the motion design community continues to grow and evolve, so do the possibilities for what work can include. One of the limitations of 3D packages is that you can't create a finished product if you're wanting to get outside of rendered frames. This is where Unreal becomes even more powerful because it provides a variety of new work possibilities that go beyond rendered frames. So for example, what's a different industry? Video games. And that's too obvious, uh, but how about virtual production? Unreal has been at the forefront as video production, VFX, and motion design have been merging together with virtual production as well as broadcast. Extended reality also continues to evolve and progress. Uh, so if you are into virtual reality and stuff like that and making stuff for that, there you go. And since Unreal has been getting into more and more industries, new work opportunities are popping up everywhere. Uh, digital products continue to grow, automotive design space, and so many more industries are now using Unreal Engine inside of their tools and are requiring motion design to help build their products. We've continued to seek growth opportunities for new types of jobs and work outside of just rendered animation frames over the last decade. Like I said, virtual production is another great avenue, but there's so many more possibilities with different screens coming out, shapes, sizes, the ability to use input, and the need for real-time graphics. The possibilities of just merging this field are growing. Thanks for watching. If all of this sounds good, but you don't know where to start, check out Jonathan Winbush's School of Motion course called Unreal Engine for 3D Artists. And make sure you like and subscribe to the School of Motion channel so you can learn a lot more about design and animation. Also, if you're interested in learning more about Unreal techniques or you just like Dan and I, check out our channel over at Cart and Horse. Link in the description below. Head to schoolofmotion.com to learn more about interactive online curriculum and let the team know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in another video real soon.